Welcome to God's house on this, the third weekend in the season of Advent. Pray God's blessings upon your worship. One announcement I'll share with you is a reminder about our midweek worship services, which are posted each Wednesday online. So please watch for those. Uh, partnership with Paul Oman, uh, the artist who did a number of the paintings here at Hope, and you get to watch him do a painting that's based upon the reading for the day. Uh, we make our beginning today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O day spring, splendor of light everlasting, come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. O King of the nations, the ruler they long for, the cornerstone uniting all people, come and save us all, whom you formed out of clay. Faithful God, you always keep your promises and you said that you would never leave us or forsake us. As we enter this Advent journey and light these candles, prepare our hearts to be carriers of your joy. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadows put to flight Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Has come to thee, O Israel 
Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to the old Israel. At this time, we join together as we profess and proclaim our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, beginning in chapter 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shale or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For the before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in, dread will be deserted. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, come. 
highest, most holy, light of light eternal, born of a virgin, a mortal, he comes. So continuing our sermon series, we're focusing on Handel's Messiah and the Bible readings behind that. And today we hear from two of those readings. We heard from one already, Isaiah chapter 7, and uh, the second one is Matthew chapter 1. And I'd like to share that with you. We're going to pick up in verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet, by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. And that's our reading for today. Let's pray. Gracious God, this day we gather in the name of Jesus. We gather to rejoice that he is Emmanuel, God with us. And today, as we contemplate what that means, I pray that you'd open our hearts, Lord. And I pray that you'd use me as your instrument to proclaim this message in a way that reveals you. And in through Jesus, I ask this. Amen. One of the things I most like about Christmas is the music that's associated with its celebration. The other day, I was listening to some Christmas music, and a Christmas station in particular, and the song, I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas, came on. And I, really, I immediately realized that Christmas isn't Christmas until I hear this song at least one time. I guess it belongs in that class of funniest and most memorable Christmas favorites. 
I suspect that some of you have some Christmas favorites too. I mean, who couldn't like it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas or Jingle Bells or I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Winter Wonderland. In the church, we sing even more amazing and more unique and memorable Christmas songs, songs like O Holy Night, and Joy to the World, Away in a Manger, O Little Town of Bethlehem, Silent Night, and of course, one of my Christmas favorites that I love to sing in church is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Here's a curious side note about that song that's always, well, will cause me to scratch my head every time I sing it. When we say that, Emmanuel, that name, it's four syllables long. But when we sing it, have you noticed it becomes Emmanuel, it becomes six. I've always thought about why we do that. I recently received an email and the header image had a, a picture of a crown uh, like royalty wears and the words below, O come, O come, Emmanuel. And this email reminded me of both the song but also of our gospel reading today from Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew tells us Jesus is Emmanuel. Verse 23, chapter 1 of Matthew, we heard just a few moments ago, says, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. This verse is a quote from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, our, our first reading, and that's why that's our first reading today, because these two are are tied and connected together. We hear and say Emmanuel many times during Christmas in the lead up and, and, and the readings, they focus on it. But we seldom stop and think about what we're saying and what it really means to us. Today, I wanna to focus on a question. The question is this, what does it mean to say that Jesus is Emmanuel? When we say that Jesus is Emmanuel, one of the things we're saying is that he is from God, that Jesus is from God. The account of Jesus' birth is found in the Gospels of Matthew and also Luke. Luke tells the story from Mary's perspective while Matthew gives us Joseph's point of view. Matthew tells us that Joseph struggled with the news that Mary was expecting a child. We also learn that he planned to divorce her quietly. Joseph's plans were, of course, dramatically and suddenly changed when an angel of God intervened and one of the things I find curious about the account in the Gospel of Matthew is that Joseph never speaks at all. No words of Joseph are recorded here. I don't know how many plays you've seen or shows, but if you've ever seen a play, a show, or even a movie, you know that the most important characters get the most lines to speak. In the case of the Gospel of Matthew, the angel does all of the speaking. The reason why is because the focus isn't really on Joseph. It's on what God was doing. Verse 22 gives us some insight into what God was doing. It says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. This passage lets us know that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise. It also lets us know what God sent Jesus to do. I want to share with you from verses 20 and, and 21 again. This is the words of the angel. Joseph, 
the angel says, Son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Did you catch the instructions given to Joseph about naming the child? The name Jesus is the name that the angel says to give this child. And that name Jesus very literally means God saves. And it's symbolic of, well, the role of this child of Jesus. God sent Jesus to save all people from the world's brokenness. What we call this brokenness sin. Make no mistake about it, we play a big part in the brokenness of the world. So when we say that Jesus is Emmanuel, we're saying that God sent Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promise to save the world and save us from sin and brokenness. And when we say Jesus is Emmanuel, we're also saying that in Jesus, God is with us. God is with us. Last week, my family and I got around to putting ornaments on our Christmas tree, finally. I love Christmas ornaments. I think they're my favorite part of decorating. And the reason I love them so much is because, well, they serve as sort of mini announcements. Some of my ornaments announce family editions. Others tell of past travel destinations. And still, others declare that I'm a fan of a particular sports team. I won't reveal my sports team because they're not doing very well this year. As I was thinking about how my ornaments serve as announcements, if you will, I was reminded that the Gospel of Matthew begins and ends with the announcement that God is with us. The first one, verse 23, they shall call his name Emmanuel, and then it says, which means God with us. I love how Matthew defines the literal meaning of the name God with us just to make sure that we don't miss the significance here. The second of these announcements that we hear in Matthew comes at the very end in chapter 28, verse 20. This time it's Jesus talking. and It says, Jesus says, And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. With these words, Jesus gives the assurance of his constant presence Now, between these two announcements, Jesus demonstrates and defines what God's presence with us means. And he does so through his actions, his life, his suffering, his death, resurrection. They dramatically reveal God's love for us and tell us how God is with us through Jesus. So the question I want to leave you with is this. How do you see and experience God's presence in the world today? This question initially seems challenging, especially in light of everything that's been happening in our world. But despite the pandemic, conflicts, violence, and politics, God is still with us. God sent Jesus so that we can have the assurance of God's saving presence through the cross of Christ. Jesus is the reminder that regardless of what's going on in the world, the good news of Emmanuel, God with us, is ours through Jesus. May the Lord comfort and keep you in the knowledge that God is with you through our Savior, through Jesus.
who is Emmanuel. Let's pray. Almighty everlasting God, today we rejoice in the good news of God with us, of promises kept, the good news that Jesus is your presence among us. That's the meaning of that word, Emmanuel. Help us to, to know it and experience it this year and always. Through Jesus Christ, in whose name we now pray. Amen. shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all people and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, your, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquakes, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disasters Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation. 
and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God of the sick and wounded, we lift into your care members of our community that are suffering from physical, emotional, and mental distress. We pray that you are with them, provide comfort, assist them in recovery, Lord, and remind them of your great love for them in this season. Especially this morning, we lift into your care Sherry Mink, who is preparing for back surgery. For Mary Kay, as we continue to pray for strength and recovery as she has been returned to the hospital. For Kristen Morundi, who is also preparing for surgery on her knee. Lord, for Nathan, as he continues treatment for seizures. And for Linda Tremaine, as she recovers from a recent hospitalization and is currently in rehab. Lord, for those that have been confronted with COVID-19, who are ill, are recovering, we're caring for those. We lift into your care, especially this morning, Roger Sonnenberg, Tina Browning's father, Maureen Wheeler, the mother of George Ann Schaefer, our preschool director, Ramey Dennis, our church secretary, Diana Vargas, the father, Maria, Ricardo, and John and Suzanne. And Lord, we thank you for the recovery of the son-in-law and stepdaughter of Scott Crowick, Diane and Larry. And for all of those that we have named and all of those that we know in our hearts, we pray that you continue to care for them, guide them, strengthen them into recovery so that they may glorify your name. Hear us, O oh Lord. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. And we are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strain Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Excelsis Deo. <laughs>
Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Oh, 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 oh Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.